Hi guys, welcome to this session in LibreOffice Base Database. What I want to show you in this video is how to create a simple table in a base database. So I'm on the opening screen and I'm going to select the option I want, which is this one, and it will step me through a wizard about creating or opening a previously created database. So I'll click on it and you'll see how it works. So this is the wizard to get you going, select database. It says they'll open an existing database or create a new one, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm just gonna leave everything as it is there, selecting next, and it's got these options. Do I want to register it? No, I don't, it's just a training thing. And then it's got open the database for editing or create tables using the wizard. Well, you can do that in the, the database, so I'll leave that unchecked at the moment. Finish. It's asking me to save it, so I'll call this one customers. So the database is going to be called customers. I'll save that. And then it'll open up and give you this view where you can see the objects down the left-hand side, tables, queries, forms, and reports. When you generate a report, it goes into Writer, which is quite cool. But what you've got to do first off, though, is create your tables, and you've got these options. So create table in design view, that would be you typing in all the fields, or you can use this wizard, which is what I want to do, because there's quite a few preset um, templates that you can use. So if I click on that option, it should open up the wizard, the table wizard. So you see there you've got four steps. The first step is to select the type of database table that you want. So it's on tasks. Well, I don't want to do one on tasks. So drop this list down. You can see you've got all these preset ones. And if you just click on a couple of them, you've got different sets of fields for each one of these. Invoices, for example, will give you all of that. And then you just push across the fields that you want for your particular database. Now, I want to do one for a customer, so if I click on customers, these are all the fields for customers. Now, you don't need to take all these fields. If some of these are not relevant to what you do, you just leave them off. I mean, fax number is a bit obs obsolete nowadays, for example, so I won't take that across. But what I'm going to take across first, because this will be the order of the table, is customer ID, and that is also going to be my primary key. So customer ID, and then you've got um, f uh, forename, surname, address, not bothered about title. Um, not bothered about department. I probably want the, uh, I can't see a city field in there. So you might have to add a city field. It's, it's, it's keeping it in there, I suppose. Quite often people like to split that down into address and then city, but never mind. Postcode I definitely want, and probably email, that'll do. So those are the fields from this list that I've decided to select. You can add additional fields at a later date if you find that you haven't added enough. Next. So now each field that you've added, it's basically telling the field type, the data type that it's set to, and these are the options that you've got in there. So this customer ID field is set as an integer. So you can see there, I want this to set be set to an auto value, so it's going to increment, and then you've got the auto increment statement basically there. I'm just going to put one in there, maximum of 10 characters, that'll do. For name, surname, address, postcode, email, everything else can stay the same. Go next, set primary key. So create a primary key or use an existing field. That's what I want, use an existing field. And I want to use customer ID. Customer ID, it's auto value, next. And I want to call it TBL. So when you do a database, you qualify the, date, the table objects with TBL table, queries with QRY, forms with FRM, RPT for reports, etc. So the options here is, um, do you want to insert data immediately so it'll look like a spreadsheet or do you want to modify the table design, go back into it, add some extra fields that weren't in the first list, for example, the city, or create a form straight away? Well, I'm just going to leave it on the top one so you can see what it looks like. And then you can see the actual table itself ready for data entry. So if I just type my name in there and then make an address up, so I'm just tabbing from one box to another, one, two, three, red road, 
any 2, 2, 5, B, N, and then Bob at Bob I, T. And then tab off. Now, I need that's a primary key, so I need to do that first. So I'll give that as a, a number one. Otherwise, it won't let me come off that record. So number one, that'll be number two. And then do the next record and so on and so on. And then that'll be number three. So that's the table getting some data. If you close this table down, either click on this little cross or, or that. I'll close that one down. Yes, I do. It sits down in this bottom window, bottom of these four table customers. And you can go back into it if you so wish. Um, when you double click on it, it just opens up, comes over here, close it down again. Now, if you need to get into design on that, you can actually go into design and add some extra fields if you so wish. You can just right click and then go edit and it will bring you into the design area where, for example, if you wanted to add the city field, you could just add the city field in there. This is what it looks like if you... Um, created one without the wizard okay I'm going to click on the customer ID field because I noticed that it didn't do the auto value that I selected in the wizard so you can set that here so I'll set that to yes save and just close this down and yes I'll have a look at it to put some data in double click on it here it comes Let's see what happens now. So it's got that to auto field. I did select that in the wizard, but it didn't keep it or it hasn't saved it, but I've been able to do it now. So I'll just put some other people in there. Paul, John. So that should give him a number four. There we go. So that's now working correctly. I don't have to worry about that. I'm just going to close this for now and go back into this to have a look at the design layout. So I've got everything I want it there. You can just move this stuff wider if you so wish. And this, this bit here in the description is where you're supposed to put some narrative to s describe what these fields are. But these fields are quite straightforward. You can sort of work out what's going off. If you want to format any of the fields, you've got this format option down the bottom there where you've got this option there. You've got currency, for example. Haven't got any number fields in there. So I don't need currency, but these are date, time, date. Uh, you've got these different options and different layouts. Default is English UK. You can change that. But this is some of the some of fields. You might have a date join, for example, column. And then you can set the format for that data entry from this format option down the bottom there. I'll just cancel that. And then close this down. Yep. I'll save the changes. And then it sits there and then you create the next table and so on and so on and so on. And then you might create some some relationships later on between tables. And then the queries are there to interrogate the tables. Forms are there to input data into either a table or a query. And then reports are the output, the management output. And as I said before, that goes into a writer. But that's basically how you use the wizard to create a table. And then how you can go into edit view to edit anything that didn't get picked up correctly in the wizard or that you didn't think went right in the wizard so sometimes you do the wizard don't know what the what the purpose of something is and then it's not working when you start entering data so hopefully this little video is of use thank you for your time i'll catch you in the next one